So Speaker Johnson is caught between a rock and a hard place a little bit with this, the funding of this government. The most extreme members of his party, the same people who gave him the speakership, are pushing for something that cannot pass. And the moderates are mostly just worried about getting reelected. While Johnson leaned in on the extreme wing, extreme wing for funding the government, the moderates are pressuring Johnson to work with Democrats on another important policy priority, which is social security using a rare procedure that's now been used for the second time since 2015, both times during Johnson's speakership, by the way. The House has approved a discharge position to sidestep Speaker Johnson's control of what bills get brought up for a vote. For a vote. This is reporting from Axios. It says the discharge petition led by representatives Abigail Spanberger, Democrat from Virginia, and Garrett Graves, Republican from Louisiana, would force a vote on the Social Security Fairness Act. The relatively non-controversial bill would close loopholes that deny Social Security payments to retirees who receive certain government pensions or other types of retirement benefits. Spanberger previously told Axios that she and Graves launched the discharge petition because the bill kept falling through the legislative cracks and being overlooked by leadership. In total, 47 Republicans and 171 Democrats backed it. So how does it work? Here we have it. Um, after seven legislative days, Graves and Spanberger will be able to request that Johnson schedule a floor vote. Johnson may end up simply allowing the vote. If he doesn't, it'll just go ahead in another two legislative days with or without his assent. Uh, Brett, this is it's all feels very, there, there's a lot of negotiating. There's a lot of tech. Tech, tech, what is the word I'm looking for? In tactics Just, and uh, yeah, a lot of tactics happening. Yeah, strategy. Thank you. I like that one. Um, in the at the end of the day, though, they're playing politics. They're playing a game. It has very little to do with the people that they are sent there to govern. What do you think? Yeah, Spamberger was in that like CNN's attempt. I mean, CNN helped brand it, but it was like the attempt mm -hmm. to go back against the squad and be like the moderate lady brigade. Um, and it just was really awkward and we covered it and it was hilarious. Um, but this, so when it comes to social security, here's things you need to know. Social security is the third rail in politics. It's the thing you're not supposed to talk about. You're not supposed to touch. You're not supposed to talk about privatizing it or making it worse um, or getting rid of those things because it's just money you get as a senior. Mm -hmm. So in the the other so the thing you try to do in politics when you're trying to uh, score points is you try to help Social Security in ways that actually are undeniably good. So Spamberger and, and Graves are saying like, listen, there's a thing wrong with Social Security where veterans and retirees, which is like kittens and puppy dogs in the discussion of politics, it's like things you can't hate. They're just the good things that should get all the stuff. You're, you know, I want to be on the side that says we should give love to puppy dogs and and kittens, which is like we should give social security benefits to seniors and retirees. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to say anyone who's against this is evil. And they want to come out smelling like roses by saying that everyone who's trying to stop this from happening is just the gunk in Washington that tries to starve veterans and seniors and make it so they can't afford living. So that's the calculation. But the headwind that they're facing is people going like, I don't know any of this ahead of time. You have to explain, you're giving me so much homework in understanding this mm -hmm. that I, I'm, it's not going to push the uh, move the needle at, at all. And that dynamic is what's become for me anyways, ex ex increasingly frustrating in politics because stuff you would think would move the needle, like the president, former president of the United States and, and presidential hopeful Donald Trump saying like, they're eating the cats, they're eating the dogs. This guy in North Carolina, like being like, I hate trans people. By the way, I love watching them have sex. Like that would get you kicked out in the past. But ever since Donald Trump didn't pull himself out of the election for saying, for getting caught saying, grab him by the P word, everybody just leans into everything. Nothing moves the needle anymore. So you keep trying and trying and hoping you score enough points on the margin that you win.
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's so much of modern politics. I, you know, I, we were talking about this before the show. We grew up in like the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, and things were very different back then. I think around the year 2000, things took a turn, at least in my life. I was very young, but uh, especially in the last 10 years since we've been dealing with Trump, which is a big chunk of people's lives, by the way, 10 years dealing with Trump and like whatever the Republican Party has transformed into. There's so much information out there. And I think that's intentional that they want to flood people with all the information. So much news. Everything's a headline. Everything is breaking. Everything is a bombshell. And, you know, whenever you have so much stuff there, a lot of things can get lost in the narrative. A lot of things can become muddled. You have immediately, anytime a headline drops, you have like, Every social media influencer and every pundit, you know, responding to it and giving their takes on it. And sometimes it becomes to the, it gets to the point where it's like, I don't even know what's happening anymore. And then you have actual issues that are actually affecting real Americans that are going to impact their lives. And they, you know, it never really makes the headlines because it's less exciting. And it takes some some understanding, some education, and that's a lot more work for people. Uh, but before we wrap up this story, I just want to mention the first time a discharge position was used against Johnson, GOP Representative Greg, how do you say that, Stubb? I never know how to say his name. Stubb? Stubb. Stubb. Uh, he had Stubb. to use the process back in May to get disaster relief to the House floor. Uh, he achieved a rare feat, successfully forcing a bill to the House floor. He hit 218 supporters on his discharge petition on Wednesday, compelling lawmakers to consider his disaster relief legislation. That bill ended up passing and granted tax relief to Americans harmed in recent hurricanes and wildfires, floods, tornadoes, and also the train derailment in Ohio. Forgot about that thing, that was crazy. Uh, it's currently in committee in the Senate. Thanks for watching our video. Did you know that you can support our show by becoming a subscriber? Just click the subscribe button and also ring the bell so that you get notifications when we're live or when we post new content.